Oh, hello, beautiful people! It's me in the same place and time as I was last time, but today we are going to do another writer vlog for you, and I've compiled several more topics that seem like they might be interesting to talk about. The first one, and potentially the reason you came here, is something that I realized that I am pretty good at and a lot of writers that I've encountered struggle with, at least the ones who are more casual writers. Often when I tell people I'm a writer, I get one of two responses. Oh yeah, me too! I totally have this book in my head that I'm gonna write someday and it's gonna be hugely popular. Uh-huh, but have you ever written anything before? Nope, but the stars are gonna align eventually and I'll write a book. Or... Oh, me too! I've written a lot of stuff, but I haven't finished anything. And it occurred to me that some people have trouble finishing their stories. And it is a skill that I have. So I'm here to talk to you about it and maybe help you figure out how to finish your stories in literally one easy step. So first, I'm gonna assume in this vlog that we are talking about writing a story that you are serious about. There is absolutely nothing wrong with writing for fun, writing along until you get bored of the story, and stopping. I do it when I'm in the mood to write for fun. So there's absolutely nothing wrong with that, but for this we are going to assume that you are trying to complete a book and that you are serious about it. That is your goal. So unfortunately for you, there are no prizes for participation in the world of serious book writing. You, I am afraid, will have to finish it. And the key to doing this, I have found, is planning. Okay, don't panic, pantsers. If you don't know what a pantser is, it means someone who flies by the seat of their pants and just writes without a lot of planning ahead of time. Don't panic. I'm one of you. Be calm. I don't. I do not do a big complicated outline. I don't do an outline at all. Maybe I'll write something down in a notebook if I want to remember it for later, but that's pretty rare. I keep it all in my head. I don't do... I don't do, like, music playlists. I don't pick out actors that would play the characters. I don't do color swatches. There is none of that. I just have a book in my head to write. However, if you are serious about finishing a book, even if you are a pantser, I really, really cannot recommend enough that you know what your ending is going to be. So if you're like, oh, I have this great idea for a book and I really want to write it, before you actually sit down and start tappy tapping away getting those words on the screen, think about how it's going to end. Think about where the characters that you have just come up with need to be by the end of the story. Is there going to be a climactic battle? Is there going to be a big emotional scene? It is really important that you know. I have met very, very few people. In fact, I don't think I have personally met any people who can write a book without knowing what the ending is going to be. I am certain that they exist, and if you're watching this video right now, hi, how's it going? You're cool. It's awesome, that power that you have. But I don't have it. Like I said, the key step, I feel, to finishing a book is knowing what the ending is going to be because you have something to drive towards. Now, perhaps the ending may morph and change in your head as you write your story, especially if you're a pantser, but knowing that you have it, knowing that you have that planned finish line will really help you finish your book. That's, that's my main advice to you, is to know where you're going. What I usually do is, when I start a book, I know what the ending is going to be, and I know what several key points are going to be within the book, and then I bridge them. And I don't write any of this shit down. It's fine. My head is big enough for it. Yep, I have a big head. What do you want from me? It's not all this hair. If you are a planner and you like to plan everything out, be sure, obviously, that you plan your ending and you put it on your timeline or whatever else you are using to work with. But, I mean, that's my advice for you. That's how I finish books, is to know what my ending is going to be. If I have an idea for a story and I realize that I don't know what the ending is going to be but I still want to write it, I do, but I go into it with the understanding that it's just for fun and it's not going to be probably turned into a novel, it's just going to be writing for front until I'm done writing it and bored with it. I've got so many of those on my computer, but if I'm serious about finishing a novel, I know the ending. Okay, now that I've talked way too much about that, let's vlog about a couple other writer concepts. 
I like to put a few of these in a video because I like to do videos that are more than like a few minutes long. So I went on Goodreads and Goodreads asks you a couple of questions when you're an author and I picked one that looked interesting to answer and that was, where did you get the inspiration for your current work? And I am counting my current work as the book I'm editing right now, Diary of a Demon which is about a boy named Anders, a computer nerdy 17 year old boy whose father promised his soul to the devil. And when Anders turns 17, the bargain goes into effect and Anders is sent to hell where he becomes a demon, but through divine intervention he has a chance to save himself and free himself from the demonscape where he is trapped. And of course he meets interesting friends, he fights dangerous enemies, all that good fantasy stuff going on. So, where did I get the idea for this book? Because the ideas have to come from somewhere. And I just want to say, don't be embarrassed to be inspired by anything. Like, if somebody's like, you can't be inspired by that other book, because it's been done. Well, I hate to tell you this, but pretty much everything's been done. As long as you're not directly stealing from another book, you can definitely be inspired by it. Or something someone says, or a video game, or a movie, or a scene in a movie, or a flower. That could be a thing. So, my book was inspired by a Facebook post from a friend of mine who I believe was reading a different book and she mused briefly what it would be like for a person who whose soul was promised without their knowledge to the devil. And that's really where this entire book came from. And the design for the character of Anders, the way he looks, was inspired a little bit by a video game that I played. Not completely, but a little bit. Like, I got the idea for his look. And those two things just happened to coincide with each other, and, and that's where the idea for Diary of a Demon came from. Quite simple. Everything else in it, though, is pretty much my imagination. I, it wasn't inspired really by other things. The demons that Anders encounters are real demons, like he encounters Legion and other famous demons that you might recognize or might not. But it's not really, like inspiration so much as I'm writing a book about demons so I felt like I should include some demons that people might know and angels that people might know. Gotta have that too. And of course the characters are often inspired by people that I know or myself. The character of Anders is a compilation of some nerdy friends that I had growing up. My brother and myself even are all lumped together into Anders to make him the delightful nerdy weirdo that he is. And I think I've said it before, but I'll say it again, I never put a person that I know completely into my book. I use elements of them to inform characters and how they act, and maybe even a little bit how they look. But mostly it's just select pieces of people that I know put into a character to make an all new person. And finally, because I like to keep these vlogs personal, I wanted to vlog with you about a dilemma that I'm having, separate from Diary of a Demon, and that is what book I want to write next. I've been writing books since I was a child. I wrote my first full-length book when I was probably about 10, maybe younger. I mean, it was shit, it was terrible. It's about a dragon and a guy who could talk to the dragon and there was a war. But anyway, and then I wrote my second full-length book when I was about 13 and that is a book that has stuck with me and been in the back of my mind for my entire life. It's called The White Rose and when I first wrote it, it was a very classic princess, bad guy chases the princess away, princess has to come into her own and find herself and blah blah blah, coming of age, fantasy story. And it was terrible, and the main character was insufferable because essentially she was me when I was 13, and it turns out that me now, at 30 years old, thinks that 13-year-old me was a shitter. So, I don't want to have that anymore, but the story and the concept and some of the, char the other characters that I created have stuck with me to this day. So I still want to re rewrite The White Rose, drastically changing some things, especially the main character. But I am worried that it's just going to be another 
generic fantasy story. And I know I shouldn't worry about that stuff, and I always tell people, write what you want to read, and I would love to read a book like that, but there is always that little nagging part of myself that's like, you want to be a writer for your career, and if you just write another fantasy story, no one will want to read it, and no one will notice it, and no one will be able to pick it apart from any of the other million fantasy stories there are right now. So, I mean, it would have great characters, because I'm really good at writing characters, but would it be enough to separate it from the other fantasy stories? So I don't know. What do you guys think? Do you think I should go with my heart and write, rewrite The White Rose and just let it be the fantasy book that it wants to be? Or should I wait for another inspiration to come along that's maybe a little bit more original? What do you think? And have you had any dilemmas like this in your life? Is there a book that you're really dying to write but you're pretty certain you won't be able to sell? Or is there a book that you're dying to write but you're afraid to because it's too different from everything that's already out there? I know what advice I would give myself, but I still can't bring myself to give it to myself. So you guys, tell me what you think. Share your thoughts. Share your writing process. I love to hear from other writers. Love it. So definitely share your writing process with me. We can be friends. You can find me on Goodreads. I'm an author on Goodreads, and I'll try to remember to link you in the doobly-doo. So you can check me out and check out my current book. And uh, I'll keep you updated on how Diary of a Demon is going, because someday, maybe, you might get to buy it. That'd be cool. But until that day, I will continue to vlog about it, and I will continue to talk to you about writing, because that's fun. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.